we're just going to have a look at the ceramic plate and mount assembly from the uh, thermal fuse side of a pair of SS5 or uh, SS4s. Uh, any, this applies to any of the irons that have this type of mount. There's little pieces of oval silicon in here that I've already taken out. Um, one of the things we see is a lot of damage caused uh, by customers uh, and uh, other people who have tried to take this apart. They'll damage the plastic tabs so that's ruined the mount or they'll bend this metal tab up uh, trying to change the thermal fuse and this will often uh, snap if you bend it and, uh, and if you do bend it up it's virtually impossible to get it in uh, proper contact with that thermal fuse and it won't then apply the correct pressure onto the thermal fuse and that thermal fuse must be in good firm contact with the element if a fault develops uh, that causes the irons to overheat uh, the thermal fuse will fail correctly so long as it's in good firm contact with the element. Uh, we'll have a closer look in a minute. If this tab is damaged or broken and that th thermal fuse is just sat there floating with a little bit of an air gap, uh, you'll be surprised at how much hotter the ceramic plate will get uh, before that thermal fuse does its job and, uh, and fails and you'll often get burnt plastic uh, you know, at, the, uh, at the higher temperatures that the irons have reached in a fault condition. So anyway we're just going to have a quick look and show you how to get this apart without uh, doing any damage whatsoever. First thing you need to do is just slide the plastic along just a little bit like that and the key thing here is you've just got to lift the thermal fuse up just enough so you can pull it to the left it'll come up and over the spring clip that's fitted in there and I'll show you that to you in a minute. So I've just pulled it up, slid it across and now we can move the plastic across and uh, slowly pull this thermal fuse out. What you don't want to do is slide the plastic across too far and pinch the thermal fuse between the element and the spring tab here. So just back it off a little bit, pull slide, pull and slide, that's released and now if you put a little bit of pressure on the leads you can remove that thermal fuse and you can replace it in this position by reversing that process. Now let's assume that you would like to strip this down completely. The easiest and safest way to do this without doing any damage is to get a flat bladed screwdriver and slide, just hold the ceramic plate and slide the element. Now that element will be quite firm in place sometimes and uh, you may have to push quite hard before that starts to slide but you just need to get it moving just a little bit. You'll see that it's come out uh, a little bit here and at this stage you can grab the leads and gently pull and that element will slide out now to remove the actual plastic mount you can slide that across to the left more 99% of the time as you pull this out you'll find that that's mounting the, the spring plate here will slide out with it so we've got that off so just remove that you might find that it's loose but if it isn't just use the same screwdriver and gently push of this out. If it twists and gets stuck just alternate the sides and, uh, and that's it. Now to reassemble this, actually I'll just show you why that thermal fuse needs to be lifted up. You'll see it's tucked in place like this normally and that little bit of metal here is what's stopping that thermal fuse from being slid along. That's uh, held in firmly by this part and it will not pull out of there unless you lift the thermal fuse up and over that little piece of metal there. Uh, so reassembling is again very easy. First thing to do is with your new element if you're replacing it 
uh, or even if you've just taken the old one out, you should always apply fresh uh, thermal paste. Just put it all over the element uh, nice and evenly and then you would pop it into the mount, or sorry, the ceramic plate, just get it in the right position and then just slide it backwards and forwards with some pressure all over the element, slide it backwards and forwards just to bed it in. At this point just have a look at the spring clip and make sure there's nothing obviously damaged and nothing's been bent and you can position that. Always make sure that that little curved part there is in contact with the so the element and press down until it clicks into place all around. At this point you need to fit your new thermal fuse or the old one if there was nothing wrong with it and you tuck the eyelets into the piece of ceramic rubber sorry silicon rubber at the end must be fitted that silicon is there for a good reason it uh, stops the wires coming into contact with the metal of the ceramic plate and keeps the cable separated. So just slide that in, gently lift that spring tab up as you can see there. No, you don't want to lift it any more than you need to to get that thermal fuse under there and just slide that and you'll see it go in and go down and that is in real nice firm contact with that. Um, heating element and that should fail at the correct temperature if your iron should ever develop a fault. <laughs> right so you're probably wondering why I didn't slide this all back together again well fortunately you don't need to because the four little plastic pieces that stick out here uh, that hold this in place generally have a slight bevel on them on each one and what that will allow you to do is to position the plate, position the mount onto the ceramic plate, tuck it in one side, you can see it's in place there, it isn't in place on the other side and just gently squeeze down until it clicks in place. If you press in the centre of the mount when you're doing that you'll find it will try and bend the plastic down and that causes the edge here to come out very slightly and that will facilitate you getting this clicked back into place. If you press down on the very edge you might damage those little plastic pieces at each uh, end. The other thing you can do if you're a little bothered is just apply the tiniest little touch of uh, grease or thermal paste just to those bits of plastic and if you're really worried uh, just with a small file just make the, the bevel just a little bit more uh, of an angle before you click them together but uh, you know with experience I don't think I've ever broken one of these or if I have I can't remember when so you just push it down from the middle and, uh, and that will help and that's it that is how you replace that without doing any damage uh, whatsoever and at that point you would pop your two pieces of silicon in, pop it into the arm and um, screw it all back in place. Do remember that thermal fuse is the two outer connections on the PCB, the heating elements are the two inner connections on the PCB. If you mix these up you can get all sorts of weird faults the most dangerous is the irons will appear to be dead but one heating element will be absolutely red hot and you won't realize that until you touch it because the irons will appear dead so do make sure that you wire this correctly